Hello, everybody. This is Marie O'Neill, president of Padma Life Coaching. I'm here today with my good friend Teal Rowe to talk about a talk that she's going to be giving at the virtual healing retreat that I'm producing on March 21st and 22nd, the spring equinox. This retreat is focused on simplified astrology for everyday use. Teal is going to be giving a wonderful talk and I want to just let you know a little bit about the talk that she's going to be giving. Hi Teal. Hi. So, Marie. hi. Will you tell the audience just a little bit about yourself and how you got into astrology? Yeah, sure. I come from an artist background and the I, I was actually raised with astrology in my life. My, my my mother did charts by hand at the kitchen table and my grandparents were doing astrology charts as well. And so I sort of put that whole life behind me mm -hmm. until I would I started a store selling my artwork and I was studying astrology. I was at a crossroads at my, in my life and I was really studying what was going on. And the people that were coming into the store were more interested in having readings done than buying the artwork. So I am now doing astrology charts. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you love the journey? The journey, just the, how the journey picks, picks us for yeah. the path. It it does. So now you're going to be giving a presentation at the virtual healing retreat on the 21st and 22nd. What will you be talking about? I'm going to be talking about the houses and it's a very simplified version of the houses in astrology. The houses are 12 different arenas or environments in the astrology chart. And separated out from the sign and the planets, the houses can be used by themselves without any real astrology. It's just, for me, I use them personally as just watching where life and how life is evolving through, through the houses. And I can run through those quickly if you'd like. Please go right ahead. Yes. So um, with the 12 different arenas, this is where things take place in our lives. And so the way that I see it is a spiral staircase spiraling up in our evolutionary process. So I start with the 12th house, which is our higher consciousness and our, it's like our unconditional love area. And that's the actual ending at the 12th house that we step into a life in the first house saying, here I am, I'm in a body and this is where I stand in my life. Then we step into the second house, which is what do I need to be here in this life? It's, it's physical, actual things and money and food and a roof over my head. And then once that is, recognized I can step into the third house and how do I communicate in this life? What is my thought process? How am I expressing myself? How am I also listening to what I need to express? That's the first quadrant. Then the, then I step into the fourth house, which is the roots of the chart going deep, deep, deep into history. And how do I feel on a feeling level in order to incorporate the history of ancestral history to be here in my life now. From there, stepping into the fifth house is, wow, this is really a lot. Well, let's have some fun here. We're not just here to like do all the serious evolutionary stuff. Let's have some fun and shine out our love and our life. And then into the sixth house, which is the daily routine in order to maintain this life? How do I maintain myself, my body, my thoughts, my joy, all of it? How do I do this on a daily process? That's the bottom half of the chart. And from there, we step over the horizon into the third quadrant of the seventh house, which is partnerships and relationships. So it's building a bridge to the other mm. outside in the world the relationship becomes important. Once that's established, then we can step into the eighth house 
of merging within that relationship. How deep do we go? Do we share our bank accounts? Do we have sex? Do we, how do we merge? How do we choose to merge with, with each other? How do we meet at a deep level? From there, that deep level sort of pushes out past in the ninth house, anything that's ever been known or developing a different language through travel, things that we don't know, just the world is our oyster and how do we go beyond it? That's the third quadrant. Then we step into the 10th house, which is traditionally it's the house of career, but really it's where we're seen for what we're doing in the world. It's like, I see it as the leaves of the tree. Mm -hmm. Like how do people see us doing our thing? And we may not know that they're seeing us, but we are doing our thing, are creating our mission. From there, we step into the 11th house, which is sort of putting the energy into the collective, like walking in and letting my ideas show to the group and the collective and not being attached to it. Then from the 11th house back and finishing up with the 12th house of higher consciousness, which it is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end and the beginning and the end. And it just continues on and on and on. Wow. Teal, I'm excited to hear your talk. This is this is wonderful. And for those of you who are listening to or listening and actually seeing this recording today, if you are interested in learning more, and I know that you are, about Teal's talk and about the virtual healing retreat, go to virtual virtual healing retreat at eventbrite. Dot com. That's a virtual healing retreat at eventbrite.com. The event is being held on the spring equinox, which is March 21st and 22nd of this year. It's being held online. So, of course, it's virtual. The time is 4 to 7 p.m. Pacific time. So if you're interested please go to virtualhealingretreat.com or virtualhealingretreat at eventbrite.com to learn more and to register. We'll hopefully see you there. Thank you. Thanks, Teal. Thanks, Marie. See you.